Hey, hey, everybody, are we live? It's hard to tell. Are we live? Our very, very special guitar mod spot show for tonight. I hope I'm not glitching out or any issues with uh, I'm still using the old laptop here. Still have not found the time to up uh, the the tower power computer. But yeah, like I am glitching, darn it. Anyway, um, get the show off the road. The phone, you might have Kurt's in, looks like Sean's in, Dwight Bailey's here, JJ's here. Um, and you guys let me know how good the uh, stream is coming across. My wife, of course. Has uh, something going on on the laptop out out in the other room too, so uh, we'll see <laughs> we'll see what happens. Anyway, I've got a very special guest on Squad Night. He is uh, one of the guys that kind of got me into thinking that I might want to take on the mod or two, and um, and he's a guy who's done some very interesting mods for some other people like this guy. Quinte Vikan James, that's right. It's the Gomer Caster. If you guys have been around long enough, you might know the community about the uh, Gomer Caster. Oh, we are glitchy, right? Well, we're going to see if the, if the laptop can make it tonight. If it doesn't, then we're going to have to switch over to the uh, to the uh, phone. And I might have to start like a whole brand new stream, which would really suck. But in either case, I'm going to bring in uh, our guest, Dave Reese of DR Guitars. And um, we'll see how we'll see how this is gonna work. It looks like it might not be working out very well. You just gonna bring him in right now. <laughs> uh, my goodness. Hey man. So, so you, you could you could just open up your phone. Right? Yeah, you could just open up your phone and add yourself if you open if you open up your messenger. I you could just add yourself. Doing. Without having to start a new stream, just FYI. Good evening, everybody. Dave, take it away. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? I see Quentin James. How's it going, Quentin? Sean Hockey, Loot Bag Larry, uh, JJ. JJ in the house. How you doing, JJ, man? Good to see you. Um, let's see. Nelson Rodriguez, Dwight Bailey in the house. Kurt 5150. Yep, yep. How's everybody doing? Good to see you, Dwight. Hope everybody's, yep. Quinn's got the nice, or yeah, Laz has the nice shirt on. <laughs> Let's see how I'm going to do this. Now you keep, keep going. Got to get a stand handy. Oops, it's a little bright. Hold on a second. Turn my way. All right, I'm gonna add my all right myself in. See how this works, and then I just I'm gonna add the other person, right? Yep. Same same way. Yep. All right, we're gonna. Have... Oops, I'll turn that down. All right, all right. How's that? Is that better? Oh yeah, much better. Except now you're echoing back. But. All right, let's see. I think what I need to do is turn the volume up on the uh, the phone here. There right? you go. That's better. That's better. All right. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> we we figured it out. So much for the laptop. Hey, <laughs> at least it was the uh, in the laptop. That'll work for me. There you go. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Music therapy last here. Roxy, I gotta go get Roxy. Roxy. Hey, Andy. How's it going, man? So we got Dwight Bailey. Kurt, you already said hi to everyone, right? Sean, how are you? Andy, Dean's here too, or is it Dion or Dean? I think it would be Dion. Like Dion. Yeah. 
That's, that's the wrong coffee cup. There we go. There you go. Ah, oh, you got the best, man. Hold on. I'll be right back. I'm going to get Roxy. Let's get out, Roxy. Yep. How's it going, Andy? Good to see you, man. She's, she's been doing a lot of bonding with uh, with uh, with Danny lately, Mike. I better half. Ah, uh, there's Roxy. Hey, Roxy. Hey, Roxy. <laughs> Who's jamming first? Yeah. So, um, yeah, we got Dave Reese in the house, the creator of the famous Gomer caster for this famous F. Vegan man. I think he's some kind of a Viking. What's the V is for <laughs> F. Viking? Vegan? Maybe F. Viking? <laughs> Viking, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I think it is. Anyway, <laughs> I've been able to figure out what the, how the V works there. But, hey. um, yeah, Quentin, Quentin, I hope he's going to join us. Uh, in the chat, if he wants to, I sent him a link. Yeah. Well, he's in the chat. I mean, in the in the yeah, stream, in the if stream. you show us the uh, the famous modded guitar, was that a Glary? What kind of? Did you where'd you get the body on that thing anyway? I, I bought the raw. I, that's that was a raw body, and I, oh, I wow. bought it. I did all the finish work on it. Um, same thing with the neck. I did the finish work on the neck. I was. Um, I was in like what you use like some kind of a pre-cat lacquer what brand yeah. lacquer did you use so that was uh that was balen lacquer uh or mohawk now it's a oh, I love mohawk. Yeah. yeah the mohawk pro yeah the mohawk product line is 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 what i like to use if i'm doing lacquer there you go man i've used that on kitchen cabinets and all kinds of other furniture yeah. touch-ups good stuff I've man i use use the uh vinyl sealer as base coat yeah. and nice. then uh yeah, yeah make sure it's nice and flat like things that are water-based right did you use like water-based stains or what kind of stains did you no use? those are uh those are solvent-based stains those were okay. uh those are actually leather dyes oh wow angelus, Hold that. angelus, that. angelus oh, leather right. dyes mm -hmm. um as a matter of fact <clears throat> For those, for those of you who haven't seen this one, this was my first one. That is so cool, man. That looks great. I love that fade to black with the green like that. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. That looks awesome. Also, it's also on the sides. You can see the... Oh, nice. Yeah, you can totally see that. Dude, that is sick. In oh, the, that's in the light, nice. yeah. Dang. And I this thought one... it was just black on the edges, but no. no. Wow. Did the I put the uh, I did all the color all the finish work on this. This is this was all war, this was the very first one I did. This was all Warmoth parts, but they were all raw, so just raw wood. Wow! Did so all the, this is like the the real mod stuff here? Like what you do is like seriously from from the very get go with the chunk of wood, right? Because I've seen like pieces of wood at like little wood shop places and stuff. I even saw some uh, recently at like a a reconstituted or whatever they call it, like a restored wood Tor place. Oh. oh, like reclaimed wood? Yeah, reclaimed and restored wood. They take like planks of floors off of big commercial buildings mm -hmm. and all. Yeah, reclaimed stuff. wood. Yeah. All these buildings that are being torn down that have been around the Bay Area, you know, and they're putting up these big dot com buildings, you know, and they're tearing out these old big brick buildings from all over the area. And, and some well, of you them know, have, like, you know, wood. Brian May's Brian May's red special is made yeah. out of a metal piece. It's made out of the neck is made out of a mantelpiece. The body is somewhat made out of some tabletop. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> the ebony, I think. I, I think where did that come from? Where he got uh, the ebony else too? Yeah. I don't remember where he where he sourced the ebony from, but yeah, they got pieces and parts from everywhere, which is yep. so cool, man. I'm I'm so getting into this because I always dreamed of like building a guitar and I think Eventually, I'll get to where you're at, man. Where you're, man. I tell you, modding is is a good place to start. Another good place yeah. to start is doing these. This is actually an inexpensive. This is an inexpensive, fairly inexpensive way to go. This is a kit guitar. Yeah, a kit build, right? Yeah. Yep. And this one, That's, and that color is pretty pretty unique too. Yeah. So this is just the. 
this is a couple different of the blue dyes and it it's it's showing up a lot more blue in the camera than than what it is in person there's it's there's a little more it's a little lighter and a little more yellow in it it's not green by any stretch of the imagination but it's yeah. looks nice yeah. so let's see what else people are saying in the chat here i thought i'd say i had a boomer bass meme dude i'm going to be sending uh going to be sending out that pedal i think it's going to you right isn't it no i'm thinking of i'm thinking of that 2019 chaos guy i confused you with that guy sorry janice just woke up from a nap that is awesome dwight bailey says hello to you dan everhart dude what's up yeah everybody's here this is cool how many people we have in the stream no uh, well it it's a vintage style sean uh, it just has six saddles. It's a it's a vintage style six saddle bridge. Any other questions? Yeah, feel Let's free see. feel free to fire them away. Fire away. That's what, uh, that's what we got Dave here for, obviously. So as I put in the uh, description, I'm like such a noob to all this. I have never even soldered a single thing that I can recall. Ever. I maybe at one point in life, maybe I did something, but yeah, I've never done any soldering. So, you know, I've got my soldering station that I bought. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I got, you know, all this stuff together and, and I haven't started on anything yet because I'm still so apprehensive about it. You know, like I got this switch <laughs> that I've got. A, you were giving me some tips on, you know. Yep. Yep. Soldering, soldering is is a learned skill nobody's nobody's good at it at first it all sucks your your best bet is to find a find an old pot don't use one of your good ones if you've got an old an, an older pot or you're yanking a pot out of something take that sorry my dog my wife just walked in so my dogs are going crazy um take that and, and learn how to learn how to solder on that old pot uh, yeah, don't use I, the I, new ones. It's hard to do that on too. I've got this uh, funky guitar that my brother gave me that he got as a gift. Let me grab it. And uh, it's kind of funny because it's uh, it's kind of funny. Notice the size. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I thought I would start on this one to do a little practicing on, just like what you're saying. And uh, it's one of these. Hoffner or whatever. It's one of these like you get free with something kind of guitar, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 completely ideal. And the yeah, right. you know, the here's here's the trick. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you that there's like three tricks to soldering. Number one is a hot iron, very hot iron. What temperature? Don't 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 leave your heat in one place for too long that's that's another trick yeah, I, I, i've learned that from watching other people for sure you don't want to do that right because you can burn out stuff right right you can burn up your components and the the other thing is don't put your solder directly on the tip of the iron i mean you have to tin your you have to tin your tip but don't when you're when you're trying to attach when you're trying to attach things to other things you don't put your solder directly on the tip. Put it on the on the like if you're soldering on the back of a pot, like there. Okay. Put your tip down and then put the solder next to the next to the tip on the back of the, on the case of the pot, and it will start flowing towards the heat. So, flow so towards, solder yeah. flows to the heat. Yeah, I think I saw yeah. you. Did you do a video about that or? Because mm -hmm. I watched a bunch of your videos before the show, so I probably saw that. Yep. Yeah. So this yep. one needs a neck adjustment because you can see that the uh, low E string is like way off of the board. <laughs> yeah. You need the. You need to. Yeah. You can see like yeah, the high back, e yeah. It you know, it just right. needs to, it needs to be shifted in the pocket. Yeah. I gotta shift it over, right? Yep. And uh, and then you know it's just a funny guitar. And then uh, your... I'll do all that practice on here, but see. This is like one of these back type, not the yep. not the type that you have on your uh, on yeah. your brand new. 
yeah, not your not your pick guard. Now I'll be honest with you, this is a lot easier than soldering out of a out of a cavity. But another 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 quick tip on soldering cavities: solder everything you can outside the cavity first. Only if you if you do it right, you only have like two wires to hook up, three wires to hook up, maybe four. I guess you got your input, your output, and your pickups. If you do it right, you can you can get basically everything soldered. Yeah, and then put it in, and or you then do the last then, thing where you yep. then do it. then do your last your final. Well, like a less Paul, you'll have six because you'll have your you'll have both pickups to solder to your pots, and then you'll have your output um, output to solder. Uh, well, now your output will be soldered. Your ground. I'm sorry, your ground. So you'll only have basically four wires to to solder in. So I'm wondering if um, if Quentin wants to show off his uh, Gomer caster, or even still in the uh, area. Quentin James F Beacon, Mr. F Beacon. <laughs> F Viking. <laughs> Viking. He's a Viking, right? F Viking. Yeah. Hey Zach Don, what's up? <laughs> Actually, Laz, I think you're supposed to turn the V into a U, but you know, it might be something to that, but <laughs> we're not telling. <laughs> Don't give away the secret, Dave. <laughs> yeah, anyway, Dave, uh, Dave and I go back as far as the uh, live wires, which we all miss. And I totally appreciate how much time doing these kinds of uh, shows can take. Yeah, so like, I really put a lot of effort into that. Where you, you know, you didn't just go live like me and just throw some questions up on the wall. You actually like plan things out with. You yeah, know, it, was, <laughs> it took a lot of. It was effort, a lot man. of work. I mean, you know, yeah. between, you know, when it was just Brian and Brian and I, you know, we were putting, we were putting, you know, twenty hours a week into it. Yeah, that's a lot at of least, time. You know, for for an hour, hour and a half long show, and yeah. uh, you know, some some weeks it was more, some it was less, but you know, for the most part, it was it was a lot of it was a lot of work, and and uh, I I took on I took on some other responsibilities at work, and that just <clears throat> that just ate all my time. Yeah, so that'll do. <laughs> there are some weeks when I'm like like today too. I was lucky enough to get home, you know, early enough to get things fired up. Right, right. And I was hoping that the laptop was going to cooperate. You know? <laughs> but, no. It's much better now, so. Well, <laughs> you got to get, you gotta to get that, that desktop it. running, man. <laughs> you know, I've got to get it set up because that's the whole point of all of this, really, is to have that set up so I can produce some music and have more fun, you know. And this is a lot of fun, obviously, and doing the mod right. thing is like an additional thing I'm going to add to the table that's already full, you know. Right, right. It's, so I'm, I'm totally digging it. And I'm really digging the whole, like, the the whole, I mean, it's really sad that Eddie Van Halen died, you know, and every, everything that's happened because of that. I think there's a lot of wonderful things blooming out of it. Some ugly things like people selling off their guitars at crazy yeah. prices and all that stuff too. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of good things that are blooming out of it. You know, um, for one thing, prior to that, I was already getting into Eddie again because what's funny is my history on music, I don't know, because you're younger, right? So I'm like 54, going on 55 this summer. Yeah. My birthday, is, my birthday is Johnny Bean. It was weird okay. thing to know that it's the same day, <laughs> which is so weird. I oh, wow. put in my license when when I was in LA at NAM 2020 2019 that is um no 2020 that's where I saw him was before okay. it all went anyway I uh, met up with him there for the first time even though he lives in this area and uh and I'm like dude you got to see my license because you're not gonna believe this and I showed him my license <laughs> that's so weird but um, but yeah, I remember first catching a video of him with Dave and uh, not Dave, and it's Dave uh, Nesdal. You know, right, they right. were doing their thing like from five, six, seven years ago or whatever. And right. I'm like I totally did not get it. I'm like, so all these like people are into EVH. Yeah, he was a great guitarist and all. I, I didn't really get it. And then the more I got into the chats and involved in you know everyone else that does this stuff, 
the more I realized that, that, you know, wow, you know, yeah, Eddie did a lot more than I ever thought that he did, you know, and then you start seeing the history and then you really start to understand why people are fanatical about the guy. Cause right. it's like, you know, if you were, if you were in the age of Mozart or Beethoven, you might've heard of the guy and known that he was great, but right. it's only years after his death. And you really start to understand all the stuff that they did. Just like Eddie, you know, and, and now we're going to, we're going to, more and more is going to come out, obviously, but, um, wow, what a, what a history. That guy, like the mod king, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think he was the one who really, really kicked that, kicked that off, right? I mean, you know, guy, it, it, as long as there's been an electric guitar to play around with, I'm sure guys have been picking them apart and, you know, trying to make yeah, trying to make totally things better, or you know, you know whatever. Like, yeah, I I just used it as a tool. So when I had my studio back in the '90s, I had a guitar because we used to sometimes lay some tracks, and and there wasn't a guitarist around, and I just kind of started to figure out the guitar because mostly I didn't right. need it, and I just put together stuff with drums and keyboards, did the bass on the keyboards and all that. But yeah, when you see like uh, someone like Eddie who really, you know. He did a lot of innovative things, you know. We wouldn't wouldn't have the Floyd Rose as it is today if it wasn't for him. Probably not. But he can use it the way everyone else does. That's the funny part. He doesn't float his. He doesn't lock his his nut. You know, <laughs> he doesn't do all the other stuff that everyone else does. <laughs> you know? Locking his nut. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he can. You say that on YouTube? <laughs> Locking his nut. You can say F Beacon. <laughs> F Viking. Okay, we gotta change it. F Viking. F Viking. <laughs> F Viking James. <laughs> Winston, do you want to show us the? Uh, you want to show us the, the Gomer Caster dude? I send you that link. Q, Q, Q said his happen? his lower back's on fire and and uh, he's he's fine. he's having a little bit of a rough time, man. I hope you feel better, Q. Yeah, dude, I totally get that. Yeah. You're getting the needle next week. All right, we should we should hit you up after that. <laughs> when he's still a little loopy off that. But yeah, for sure, yeah. I know what that pain's like because I have a cervical um, problem up here, C5, 6, and 7. They want to actually, one one surgical like neuro specialist wants to like, like what did he call it? Fuse my, my neck together with a plate up there. And I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to turn my head. I wouldn't be able to like not right. out the way. So I said no thanks. So workman's comp uh, issue that's working itself out eventually. <laughs> it's not Hopefully. gonna be like winning the lotto or anything, but it'll definitely help. <laughs> yeah. So, but you were you were then somewhat influenced by Eddie, or were you more influenced by Randy? Because like Randy was influenced by eddie but randy did something different with this, um, um more of a randy guy <laughs> randy, oh, wow. right? huh is that, is that because of the the playing style uh the music all together um yeah. yeah the style i i i like the i i like his the the classical thing that he did you know the all that influence and um you know it wasn't it wasn't the poppy you know a little little more poppy thing like the later later van hey like when i came around in the music it was you know mid 80s and and you know you had a lot of the that like by that point you know Eddie or the the van halen thing was a lot of pop more a little more pop rock than um, you know, I didn't, I didn't discover the early albums until much later on, which I, I do like a lot of the, the very yeah, early Van Halen I stuff. The album better too, to be honest, though, I think, you know, the Van Hagar era, as we called it, we called it Van Hagar. Yep. There were a yeah. lot of haters back then that just say, oh, Van Hagar. Like they just wanted yeah. to, I mean, I kind of yeah. left the whole like, like metal hair, metal kind of. Before it got to the point where it became so glammy, I was like, oh, the glammy side of it just ruined it for me. And I was like, just out of it. And I got into alternative rock and alternative. Yeah. I mean, you know, 
I'm a I'm a big Motley Crue fan. I don't I don't think anybody anybody that that <laughs> that's seen the live wires is 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 under any other illusion. I right. mean, you know, we, we named we named a show after after the song. A lot of the bits were named after songs. You know, uh, there's there's a heavy Motley Crue influence there. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean. Generally, generally speaking, I back then I liked my music a little heavier, and yeah. uh, you know, around that time, Ozzy Osbourne, Randy Rhodes tribute came out, and I heard Randy Rhodes for the first time, and I'm just like, oh my god, there, yeah. there's there there there's something special there, you yeah. know, and and uh, you know, I was again, you know, not not trying to you know, not trying to be on one side of the fence or the other, uh, you know, cause a lot, a lot of guys really are. I mean, a lot of times you, you find people polarized with Randy or Eddie, you know, and it doesn't have to be an yeah. or, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm, I, I, there's just, there's just something about his play that Randy's playing, you know, he had, he gave us basically two albums of, of what he could do. Right at the time and you know nothing to, to me nothing short of phenomenal and yeah you know the, the those tunes just that for whatever reason they just resonate resonate with me a lot more than you know a lot more than the than than yeah. than some of the other stuff um there's a depth to them and i think the songwriting even though i think eddie van halen is a great songwriter too there was that influence, I, I honestly think, from his dad and from a lot of that kind of jazz, bebop style, right. swing style music. And you hear mm -hmm. it in anything, and you hear it, you know. And you, then he yeah. does all the easy tapping and, and all the other, like what we call guitar acrobatics, right? Right, that, right. A little showy. And some people got, I got turned off from that after a while. I'm like, oh, okay. I remember watching, right. uh, watching you know, recently after his death, uh, some of his stuff, you know on online some of his like live performances right and yeah I and mean, the guy's the king at it but you know a lot of other people took from that and even went beyond that and yeah. did things you know that are even I mean, for even eddie, eddie eddie had something a lot of those guys didn't or yeah. i shouldn't say it didn't but they lacked and that was groove yeah um, he had swing groove and i think that comes a lot from his dad's music because yeah. he grew up in that dance hall kind of style music. I grew up with that too in the Hungarian community here because right. you know, it's all these Hungarian balls that had all that oompa pa music, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like dance groove because you know it was all dance music and, right. and that kind of thing. And you know, obviously what what I think Randy was doing was being more of a classical composer minded person. He was right. composing his mind already. Right. The part how he was going to do them and how he transposed some of that stuff live. Cause you know, I saw him live. I was one of the lucky. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm at the CU event center in Colorado for, you know, Dire of the man band tour. So dude, it was, and what's funny about that story too, is that there was a massive blizzard and they were like over an hour and a half late to stage time to, Oh perform. wow. They, they actually were offering people, um, money back and a ticket in the future kind of thing. And I don't know if anyone left, but boy, are they sorry because three months later, he died. Right, right, right. Plane crash. You're never going to get another chance. So I went up uh, with a couple high school buddies and man, I mean, this was back in, you know, early 82, I think it was. Yeah, had to have been early 82 because he died in March, March 19th, yeah, 1982. Yeah, like January or could have been December. I can't remember the exact month. I looked it up once or twice, but I can't remember. But, yeah, um, but you know, I, I, set their stage, dude. They they had just their the stuff they had on their their truck and the bus because like the cages and all the stuff they had for diary. They didn't have any of that. They right. were just on stage with their gear, and and it was just a like bare bones rock rock and roll night. And they just tore the fucking roof off that place. Oh it man, awesome. I bet. Huh. it was awesome. <laughs> I, I I have to agree with that, Sean. I absolutely have to agree with that. You know, and, and, and the, the, the thing is, is, yeah. you know, Randy, Randy was 25 when he died. And, you know, at, at 25, 
you got to think, man, think, think about where you were at 25 and what you were, you know, the, the rate you were still learning things at 25. Yeah. You know, where would he have been, you know, 20 or 30 yeah. years later? You know, with Hendrix, right? Like Hendrix died young too, just at yep. the point where he was starting his own thing with a studio. Yep. You know, Hendrix, was, to Hendrix was 27, right? Cause he's a, he's part of the 27 club. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you've got like that pre 30 years old. I mean, you're hardly grown up, you know, I, I, know, mean, I know. Old, you, know. You, you barely know you're alive at that point in your life, okay. you know, really. And truthfully, you, you, <laughs> so so like what mods were there mods out there that influenced you to get into building and modding guitars rather than just being a player or what like got you into wanting to mod in the first place it, it was more about trying to find the sound i heard in my head mm -hmm. and you know i i would play a guitar and then i pick up another and and, and this comes from having a you know having a a few different guitars. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, think there's, <laughs> I think there's like 20 of them here. So who's counting? Yeah. Um, you know, so you, you pick up a guitar and you, you, you have a sound out of it and you pick up another guitar and you get a different sound out of it, but then you have another sound completely in your head. And it's like, how can I, can I make this guitar, sound like what I hear here, you know, what I hear up here. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I learned pretty early on that, Hey, you know, you can radically change the way a guitar sounds by changing the pickups. For sure. Yeah. So I like, mean, was you, that the first mod that you did, did you like drop a different set of pickups in your, um, I'm trying to remember the first mod I ever, no, the first mod I ever did on a guitar. I was probably 12 or 13 years old. And I decked the Floyd Rose and took the, took the lock and tune, lock and tuner or lock and nuts off of it. Oh, yeah. So and you off the top or did you like, you didn't replace the nut. You just took, no, no, I didn't off. replace. No, I just, I just took the lockers off and, and, yeah. and, uh, and figured out how to, you know, make sure the, make sure the bridge deck so it would play in tune. Cause I, you know, back then you didn't have the internet, so I didn't know, you know, I was a kid and so I didn't have money, so I couldn't take it to, to couldn't take it to somebody and say, right. here, fix this, you know, set it up. So I just had to figure it out on my own, and that's what I did. I just, I just, you know, cranked the springs down so it it pulled the pulled the Floyd as tight to the body so it didn't move so I could so I could play it in tune. Wow, uh, <laughs> that was that was you technically the first mod I ever did. Go down on it though, right? So you still were able to dive down. You on could, it. yeah, yeah. You you could still dive down, but uh, I didn't it off. I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't even put the put the whammy bar on it after the after the novelty wore off on it. <laughs> so like right now, how many guitars do you have that have a Floyd or whammy or you like are all hardtail? Uh okay, Floyd Rose, I have one, two, three, I have four Jacksons over here. So I have four with Floyd's, and then I have just the uh, the Strat. Well, if you want to count, if you want to count that um, that point. kit guitar that's in, that's that's oh. not full, it's five with Floyd. Um, but yeah, I'm just making sure I'm telling you right. Uh, yeah, the the Strat is the only other one with the tremolo on it. Yeah. So Everything I else is hard, though. On occasion, I enjoy the wiggly, wiggly stick, as uh, Penny would call it. <laughs> the wiggly I, stick. I, you know, for certain things, for certain yeah. things, I like it. Um, I, I, when I'm when I'm playing guitars with them, I'll use it. But I not, know you like Floyd stuff. You play you play a lot of Dave's, you know, stuff too. So I know that you really like, you know, the Floyd stuff, and he's on top of that. He, he does more his he uses his more as a vibrato rather than like 
you know, like yeah. heavy dives or, or anything like that. Yeah. He uses it more as a, is more of a vibrola type thing. Um, where most of the time when I'm playing Gilmore, I don't even, I don't, I don't even have the whammy bar on my strat. So I just, I just use, you know, I just use, you know, like I'll tremolo you'll a bend. Mm -hmm. You'll just use your fingers or you'll bend the neck or you'll yeah. reach the groin. <laughs> I don't usually do the reach over thing, man. That's too hard to get back. It's too too much of a distance to go from here to here. <laughs> That's like what, what Jimmy Page would do, I guess, right? Or Slash or whoever, you know. Yeah, Randy, Randy, Randy did it too. Randy did it too. That's quite a bit with his L, his Les Paul, that LP. You yep. know, I saw a 75 Les Paul in that same custom, that same setup at Norman's when I was down at LA last year. Nice. And it was going for like around five grand or something yeah. like that. But it was in such bad shape. Yeah. Alpine was like, white it was practically cracking off of the body. It was it was, was it like white? Submerged. Yeah. Yeah. It was the white one that yeah. gone all yellow, just like his. You white, know? white one. White one. White ones are the the Alpine white Les Paul custom is 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 the one that's going to hold the most value because there weren't that many of them made. Yeah. yeah, that one was in such bad shape. I was like, even if I had the money, I wouldn't buy it because I'm like, God, it's so like, seriously, it looked like it was like, like dropped in a jacuzzi overnight. It was that bad. It was like totally bad. Yep. So, like, what's your your recent project that you're working on? I know you have that new flying V that you're really totally into that everyone's seen, but what what's like Man. your most project? <laughs> uh. Project-wise, it's pretty much at a standstill at the moment. Um, yeah. I just haven't had I just haven't had the time or the energy to to pour myself into into in, into anything very much. Um, I've had these since October. Yeah, pick, pickups. Well, yeah. I, I I love doing pickups, man. Pickups yeah. to me are are just a lot of fun. Uh, just you know either whether it's installing them or swapping them out or whatever i, I actually enjoy soldering which is yeah, I'm kind of funny i'm looking forward to being like you dave where i'm gonna have my little room upstairs this little storage room i'm converting right i got another storage room because i'm the manager and i and i was able to procure two of the storage rooms for myself instead of a raise each year i said I'll take oh there you go room. i'll take a storage room you know and they're worth more to me and that works. uh one upstairs that I first had has a window, so it's perfect for venting, you know, and, yeah. and I've got to move all the crap that's in there, and I've been moving it slowly. Whenever I have a little time, I'll move a few things over to the other one, you know. And I had this kid over that I helped with uh, some of his English and stuff. He, I also got him into music and stuff, and it kind of saved his life. Um, okay. And he the whole, like, school of rock thing and everything, it, like, kind of brought him out of his shell. Nice. And so he's a totally great kid now, but he got accepted to a local – like private university here and his grandpa's on him like if you don't get a C or better average which is like just passing you know he's like totally right. nice if you don't just get c's and just don't drop or get a d or you know lose any of these classes he'll pay for his entire next year and then the year after so he's trying to motivate him but like the kid comes by last weekend calls me up on friday or whatever he says hey can you help me out with this paper it's due on monday i'm like all right, you know, send me what you've got so far on it. He hasn't done anything. He comes over Saturday, and then I have him come over on Sunday too. And then I got together with him as well on on Tuesday to try to help him with it because he had right. three weeks and he didn't do anything. And I'm like, kid, I'm gonna freaking kill you, you know. So right. now I'm like helping him out with stuff. But I I had him at least help me do some stuff in the uh, studio room here. So we have just to show you guys, we've got this little like couch thing that I haven't put the legs on yet, but it, it opens up into, it's like a Serta. Okay. Like a, a Almost like a futon. Couch. Okay. It's kind of like a day bed couch kind of thing. So I had him help me bring that. I went and picked it up with him with the van that I have, the, the Franken van. I don't know if you've heard of the Franken van. <laughs> it's my uncle's old work van that I'm going to stripe up like uh, the Franken van. Um, that. <laughs> There's this guy, I don't know if you've seen Cobra Kai Platoon around in some of the chats. You know the guy? Uh, you know, Johnny Beans thing, then you don't know who he is. But if you've gone to Johnny Beans thing, you know 
Cobra Kai. Okay. It's like, yeah, he does a lot of graphic stuff, and he's done a bunch of free, like graphic okay. stuff. He did was he, he did a uh, like a faux graphic mock-up of of the van with stripes on. It. Okay. Like Frankenstein, white, right, and, right. and uh, it's hilarious because uh, I'm like, well, I'm gonna do that, <laughs> you know, and so it's gonna be the Franken van. Right. So I have, I already bought the pinstriping and everything. It's just uh, <laughs> nice. Hair is done to the body and the thing painted, and then uh, stripe it up. And then uh, this other guy, Kurt, fifty one fifty. He's like been communicating. He did the first show with me of this like series. This okay. Number three you're, you're in the top three, dude. Oh wow. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I thought of you pretty much immediately because I'm like, I know a guy who mods stuff. You know, this guy Dave. So um. So we're going to probably do a trip down to L.A. and hit all the Van Halen spots, you know. And then nice. we'll probably try to hit the uh, the the um, Randy Museum, too, if his mom still got that thing going. Uh, so well, you know, his mom, his mom, D died several years ago. Oh. Uh, it, it's his brother, Kel, Kelly. Oh, the, that, when was it, it that? Wasn't stuff stolen? Like, was it, wasn't was the mom still alive when the stuff was stolen? No. Uh, no. She, oh, she's been... D died. D died when 2016, 2015. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, she's been she's been she's been gone several years. Um, That's still alive. Wow. Now I'm and really yeah, Kelly 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 ran Musonia up until I think they officially closed it in 2019. Wow. Um. Uh, it, it they still do he'll still do tours if he's if you know if 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 he's there um but yeah i i i want to say i want to say they closed the doors on musonia in 2019 um so that's too bad i wish i would have seen that that would have been nice yeah yeah, ne never made it to. In fact, I've only driven through LA, and that was on the trip from Oregon to here, <laughs> and that was it. And it was. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm saddened that I don't get to see that, but you know, I, I got to see him live. <laughs> I got to see there you go. Live. Well, I mean, it, it might be something, you know, check out. They, I know they had a website. I don't know if it's still up and functional, but I know that uh, check out, check it out. Just do a Google search on Musonia yeah, and, sure. and, and see if they're still doing, see if Kelly's still doing yeah. any like private. Cause a lot of times he'll just do a private tour, especially if you want to document it, like for yeah, YouTube or whatever. Good documentary kind of thing because he yeah. was like one of the reasons why i actually bought a guitar so you know i was early influences obviously were like watching like whatever or, or listening to anyway on the radio because mm -hmm. they did videos back then was kiss you know and ace freely and i remember i remember the song you know detroit rock city i'm jumping around in the living room i'm like 11 years old or 10 years old and i think i was 11 I'm jumping around with this like wooden tennis racket going like this, you know, na, 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 na. you know, so, so that was my early influence was that guy. And then because I played piano a little bit and stuff back then, you know, L I, little, you know, little known fact when I was, oh, probably three years old for yeah. Halloween, I dressed as Ace Fraley. I had, the little, go, plastic, I had the little plastic mask and the little plastic, you know, you had good parents. <laughs> Right on. Yeah, we were, I think uh, we were always like, damn, I was a vampire or something. I was James Bond one time. That was kind of fun because I saw Live and Let Die and I'm like, I have to. Oh, nice. Song. So I got I was, my dad's, you know, frilly tuxedo, like 70s style, those curly ones, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. <laughs> I had his I did, shirt on, uh, my jacket and suit pants and all, you know, but it had the tuxedo thing. I, I, did, like, Fre I, I did Freddy Krueger one year. I had the. Oh, uh, I, I I got the uh, the the prosthetics that you actually glue on. You know, you oh, no way. you went all, all the way. Yeah, when I went like I like hand painted them all and 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 this and that and and. Uh, How did you do the the slicer hands? I, I had I, I I bought one of the one of the gloves. It was when they were selling them, 
and it was it, they were plastic yeah. they were plastic blades but okay. you know uh I had the glove and the the sweater and the you know the hat oh. and and uh uh I, I was probably i don't know i was probably 15 or so 15 yeah. or 16 when i when i did that and uh the whole idea was just scare the shit out of little kids <laughs> I went as deaf one time just to do that. And I remember one time some little kid opened the door with his parents behind me, and I'm like deaf there, you know, with this glowing yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Death, nice. like, death face with like red eyes that glowed. When they opened the door, it like lit me up, you know. And that kid just started crying like right away, like ah! Started crying. <laughs> nice. like, How do, do that, you know. I'm like, it's Halloween, people. Ugh. Exactly. It's trick or treat. It, trick or treat, right? Trick. You, you yeah. missed the trick part. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah, but Queen's my favorite. Yeah. yeah, I had a I had a buddy that same year. I had a buddy of mine do uh, Jason. He dressed as Jason Voorhees, oh, and we we went around just scaring the crap out of little kids. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> of course, like I say, you're you know 15, 16 years old, so you know. That's yeah, you get yeah, more that enjoyment was, out of that was the age when we used to go around. I remember there were like roving gangs of other kids throwing eggs at other kids and everyone right. was like egg houses and teeping houses and stuff. Right. This is what we grew up doing. I, I don't know if kids today even get to have that kind of fun anymore. No. 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 Like terrorist organization or something, you know, for <laughs> for having fun. <laughs> yeah, they they get arrested for that now. <laughs> Sean, Sean Hockey says, hey, Doc Bob, what's happening? Sean Hockey says, love the van. Yeah, you've never seen a you've never seen a picture of the van? Let me show you a picture of the van. Let's see if you can find my – did I bring my phone in here? Oh, I'm using my phone. Damn it. Okay. Let's see if I can get it off of uh, another device here because I put it up in all kinds of places. But um, – yeah, I think Instagram might be the easiest, but I don't even think I have Instagram on this tab. No, I don't. Never mind. It's going to be take too long. It's not that important. Anyway, Frankenvan. I'll put up a picture of it again. I think actually I did a Frankenvan. Where's Frankenvan? Earlier in the week, and somebody yeah. uh, somebody won something, and they haven't claimed it. They're like, "Oh, cool! I won!" And I'm like, "Okay, send me an email so I can send you your stuff." You know, and they haven't sent me an email yet, so. Dude, send me your info if you want a winning thing. Otherwise, I have to save it till the next time. Right? It sucks, yeah. You know, some strings or a free strap or a free, like, headstock tuner or whatever. Right? You know, just something fun. I do that once, once a month. But anyway, if you saw that that picture, that's the van. That's my uncle's van with the uh, okay. marks on it that uh, this Cobra Kai guy did. So... Okay. So I'm gonna actually do that to that van, which is funny. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm gonna. Do hey, that it. works. It, it's almost dead. It's got fifty thousand miles on it, and I think if we're lucky, we'll make it to LA and back. <laughs> no, Sean. Sean said it was him, and he sent in, sent in the address. Oh, Sean. Okay, good. Well, good. It was me, and I sent the address. All right. Well, I better check check my email again because I checked it earlier. Roxy, Roxy's, Roxy's trying to get close to me. What's happening, Roxy? Are you being ignored? I'm sorry. So we were, we were, we were talking a little bit in the green room, and uh, yeah. you were, you were asking me a little bit about some of the, some of the components I use, and uh, we can, we can, we can run over those real fast. Yeah, um, uh, like about wiring um, like this and wiring, what, yeah stuff to do yeah so, so go ahead so first off we'll start with the important part output jacks not the input jack. not an input jack it's an output jack on a guitar oh, it's an input jack on an amp or in something else but it's an output jack on a guitar just because you tone. plug into the guitar doesn't mean that the signal is going in signals uh, going uh, out and therefore coming out, out Jack. <laughs> pure tone, pure tone jacks. Um, pure tone, pure tone, plain and simple. Uh, 
the switch crash switch crash are fine i i just like the uh four points contact so the four points of contact so look i have a switchcraft one and let me show you guys the difference that he's talking about here so of course i have the uh, strat style boat he has the on the edge style you know but i have the uh boat style right and you notice that this one only has the two points of contact, right? Move, move it to your right just a little bit more or less. Oh, yeah, sorry. There you go. See, there's two points of contact there, right? You guys see that? I hope you guys see that. Anyway. So this one, this one, you can see you have two long lugs, and then you have two short lugs in the middle there. Yeah, hold it up closer to the camera. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So you got four points of contact. So it really holds yep. your jack in there. It, it, it hold, yeah, it holds your cable in really nice and snug. I mean, it's it's hard to push in. It's hard to pull out. So you're not going to, like if you're gigging, you're not going to step on it and rip your cable, <laughs> rip your cable out of your, out of your guitar. Um, so I like pure tone jacks for that reason. The uh, failure failure rate on these is a little bit less uh, because you have four points of contact. Even if you bend one of the lugs out, you're still going to have three points of contact. If you bend two of them out, you're still going to have two. So I, I like these. Um, pot, they're probably about the same price anyway, right? Yeah, they're they're a couple dollars more, but in the long run, a couple bucks. I mean, I, I get them like, so, yeah, I get a pair of them for like six bucks on Amazon. Um, pots, always CTS. CTS yeah. or Borns. Um, I've got the Borns. I, I don't like the no loads on the Borns. The the I, I, I like I like having some actual resistance when I'm turning my turning my pots. I also like linear tapers on volume. And audio tapers on tone, but so that's just me. Taper on uh, audio, ta audio. So the difference between audio and linear taper, uh, audio taper, is where you where you're gonna have all your volume in the first, like, yeah. You, you ever you ever have an amp that? Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever have yeah. an amp where you where you turn it up? It, it's really quiet until you hit two, and then it's like loud. But when you go above two, it doesn't go very much louder. That's an audio yeah. taper. Audio so taper. Uh, your 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 sweep is in a very small area. Linear taper, it's it's a lot more even across this across the sweep. So yeah, that would make sense I, for a volume, especially right. I, I like linear tapers for volume. And audio tapers for tone. Of course, I never use. Most of you guys know I never use my tone tone knob, so might as well not even have one. <laughs> Why do they put? That? Actually, the only guitar that I've actually used that in is this this green one right here, the Henning. Okay. The, the poly. Because yeah. he has set up with the uh, um, the you know push push, so that yeah. when you have the P90 with the split humbucker. And you do like a, um, I guess it's uh, what do they call it? It's um, out of phase. And mm -hmm. for out of phase, when you turn the tone knob down to about halfway, it gives you that right. Brian May sound. Like okay, it nails. okay, it nails it. It's okay, that works. Come on. Come on. Uh, switches are either Oaks Grigsby or CRL on the switches. Uh, Switchcraft on the on the three way toggles. Those are. Uh, the, the, again, my preference, not saying that, you know. But there's reason, right? So you have reasons for why, like, you know. Yeah, the, like CTS. The <laughs> so, like, yeah, with the with the output jacks, you've got the four four points contact. With um, CTS, I mean. The bigger, the bigger, thicker breadboard, and what else did you tell me about? You said. What, for the, oh, for the Oaks Grigsby? Yeah. So, so the. the prettier. Yeah, it, I mean it's a, it's it's a it's just a well made switch. Um, they're they're nice and smooth, fairly quiet. They're they're not hard to hard to roll, um, and I mean they're just they're they're just one of the best names in the business. Um, as far as you know, as far as like five way or four way, and Oak, Oak Grigsby is one of the only people that make a four way. 
switch for like a Telecaster. And that's oh, my cool. that's yeah. my absolutely favorite switch for a Telecaster is getting that getting that uh, series in parallel. Four way for the Tele. Because you know yeah. that's my next mod after I do the uh, strat that I'm working on. So the blue one okay. so the uh, the black top strat right there in between the Gretsch and the uh, Tele. Okay. The next one I to modify is that Tele that I oh that's my that's my strat. What am I saying? My Tele that's right over there. Okay. Yep. Yep. I won that. I won that at a Guitar nice. Center grand opening. Believe it or not. Yeah. Four, four four way switch on a Tele is pretty magical because yeah. you get that you, you can get that series in parallel and then you get the neck and the bridge right. That's the thing. The key. Yeah. Yeah. You know what got me thinking about asking you about the switches and how to set switches up too was watching Jay Leonard Jay's video recently. He put out a video just this last week about how he likes to have his tellies with the switches. And previous to that, he did a really cool video on how you can modify with a Bigsby. That's not one that you have to screw in. It's something that like kind of right. hangs yeah. off. In yeah. And that's something I was thinking about doing to that because I like my whammy whammy kind of soundy stuff. I like to do right. that. I was thinking about that's not your standard kind of, let me grab it down. This is one of those modern player ones made in China, but they, they decided to put the uh, tele, I mean the Fender, the Fender logo, yeah, logo on it, even though it's made in China. You know, so it's basically right. going to be higher. And um, and you know, it's got mm -hmm. the tummy, the tummy cut, and everything. You know, nice. Like and it's got that Nashville style kind of setup with the switch right. too. You know, HSS, so you can, yep. Yeah. So that's like the the Gomer caster. When I built the Gomer caster. I had uh, I had an interesting I had an interesting dilemma because it's a uh, it's a hum it's a it's an HH and right. yeah. it's you know it's well it's an HH I'm sorry it's an H or SH sorry it's single in the neck and humbucker in the bridge and so I had an interesting dilemma because it was it only had the it only had the peanut route right for standard telly instead of like my my tele custom, which is a humbucker neck and single bridge or SH and uh, where you've got the, the, the two volume, two tone layout on the, on the custom, you just have, you know, you just have singles uh, master volume, master tone. So I, I was able to find a, a control plate that had the, that had the mini toggle. And so I was able, I was able to switch, I actually used a, an an on off on, uh, or what is that? Double double Three pull, du double pull, double throw. Somebody please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm trying to remember all this okay. crap, and yeah. it's 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 been like a hot minute since I built that thing. But it's a uh, so it's on off on. So it's a three position. It's it's a three right, way right. switch, right. and uh, one way one way uh, splits splits the neck one way splits the bridge and one way splits or in the middle switches are in the middle's full humbucker mode on both yeah because what i did was a uh, uh, 50 was it is a 59 in the neck and a and a uh, hot rails in the bridge is is what i did in that on 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 yeah okay yeah on on yeah what whatever it is thanks brad <laughs> whatever it is um, yeah, I noticed Brian Spaulding's in the house. What's up, Brian? Thanks for joining. Brad Miller is in the house, dude. What's up, Lars? Guitars is here too. Closing out the show with how many people are in here? About eighteen. That's not bad for my my third episode. Hopefully, nice. this takes off. It's fun. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm learning a lot, so it's almost selfish in a way that I'm gonna like draw all this draw all this information out of all you guys. <laughs> No, it's fun. It's gonna be like doing all these builds, like what you do, you know. But um, really, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy your, it. Your your best your best friend for doing any electronics is one of these guys, multimeter. And yeah, I've got in a box up there, I'm gonna use it. And the next best friend, I would probably say, if you're gonna be doing the soldering stuff, is one of these helping hands tools. Helping hands, helping hands are great. So, 10, 50 bucks, get one. <laughs> so the the thing to remember is 
as always when you're when you're doing when you're doing mods and you're 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 talking pot values, potentiometer values, not how much THC is in your weed, okay? Right. <laughs> potentiometer values. Always measure, always measure your pots wide open. And so if you depending on how you're gonna gonna do your control layout, if you're if you're doing multiple volume controls, your bridge, your bridge volume. Remember this, your bridge volume should always be your highest value pot. Your neck, if you're doing a neck volume, your neck volume should always be your next highest value pot. And then the tones, it doesn't, it doesn't matter as much. But that's that's the order you you so you always want your volume, your bridge volume to be the highest value. Look at all these notes I've taken, people. <laughs> <laughs> and you said something else about pots that I never thought about, you know, in our green room chat, which was to buy them so that they're they're matched. Match, buy match sets you know, if you, you can. can. Buy them, like, like tubes where you want to buy match sets or bias tubes. It's kind of the same idea in a sense, right? You want to. Yeah, you want to you want to get them all and you want to get them all in a, a pretty small window. So yeah. when you when you buy. When you when you go online or when you go to Guitar Center or or wherever and you buy a pot, most of the pots that you're gonna buy for guitars are plus minus twenty percent. And so that means it can play if you're buying a five hundred K pot, what's twenty percent of five hundred K? A hundred hundred K on or hundred K basically. Is it really that much? Twenty yeah, percent? Absolutely. It's it's twenty percent, twenty percent tolerance. So the, it, it can be it can be anywhere from about four hundred and ten k to about almost six hundred k. So when I go so, through these like foreign spots that I bought, I could like test each one to see which ones are closer to each other and use those kind of match yep. them myself in a sense, yep. right? So that match. Yep. So and then what, what are, I, are these things or not? Uh, so your capacitors are a little different. Uh, the capacitors are generally about ten percent. On those on those orange drops, depending depending, uh, some of them can be as tight as like two percent, one percent, but most of the time you're going to get a plus minus ten. It it'll tell you right on the pot what the plus minus is, um, but that doesn't matter really so much as, uh, especially if you're not using the tone control very much, <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, you, you definitely want to test all of them. Your high again, your high, your actually your lowest value to, uh, on the on the um, uh, capacitor. Your lowest value goes in the bridge. Highest value goes in the neck. And let me plug this into the phone before the phone dies. All right. <laughs> I know preparation, right? So. Uh, the other question I had for you is that the other thing I'm going to be putting into this uh, this blacktop strap, super strap build that I'm doing is one of these. Which, oh, kill switch? Yep, it's the game style one. Yep, the, oh, the arcade style. style. Yeah, the arcade got style. Yeah, yeah. The arcade, and it's like 10 million, you know, depresses of what are depressions. Um, so, I, you know, obviously it came with some instructions, but, um, you know, what about this? How is this going to affect all that? Like, shouldn't it, it should. So it, that's, that's basically all, all that is, is basically a switch. It's just an so on off. going to be turning things on and off. That's and all. Yeah. You basically, you basically you should probably, you really should. I mean, you, really and truthfully, you should wire it right to your output jack or in series with your output jack. So that way it, it kills everything. When you, when you press it, it, it kills, it basically just kills the signal. That would make sense. That way it always works no matter what position I'm in. Right. 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 I mean, other, otherwise you could, you could connect it basically, or you could connect it to any pickup. Uh, and again, it's just going to, it's just going to kill the output. Uh, it's just going to short it is all it's going to do. Yeah. It's That's open right. or closed. It's on or off. So One or zero in series, in series with the output jack, so that's kind of like 
I'm going to have to figure all this stuff out. Yeah, well, when I say in series, it's basically in line with your output, Jack. Every, everything's going to wire. Everything's Everything coming off of your... Everything, com slow. everything coming off your five way, yeah. So, and the way I color code my wires, uh, <laughs> and yes, I do color. Yeah, like I, I, do, I do color. I do color code my wires. Um, so basically, your output is going to go. So your kill switch is going to go to here and. Here, no, those are pickups. I have to think about this for a minute. It's been a, it's been a hot minute. Okay, there's your ground. That's your, that's your main ground right there. So that's going to go to your output jack. So your kill switch is going to go in line with this, with your, your ground and your kill switch, and then your hot and your kill switch is going to go, should be this guy right here well, off your switch. And that's going to go in line. Uh, your. I'm making notes. Yep. I'll probably have to give you a call. No worries. Okay. Um, before I get get down to soldering. <laughs> anyway, well, it's been fun, man. This has been like yeah, the man. hour went so fast. Yeah, it's, it's been, been really hour. fast. You're right. Yeah. We talked Brandy Rose. We talked EBH a little, the the king of mods, and yep. uh, one of the influencers on a lot of people out there, like making building guitars and modding guitars. And then, yep. of course, you know your stuff, the Gomer Caster. That was awesome. That was a community thing, by the way, everyone. If you don't know about what the Gomer Caster is, just put that a in the YouTube Gomer Caster. Quite and, quite a few uh, people helped make that happen, and yeah, uh, a lot of. Um, put money toward that or sent parts or whatever and and yep. i thought the uh the reveal video that quentin did was just so fun <laughs> i watched it again oh, that was so around. much fun yeah that was so 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 much fun there there were so many f-bombs flying out of that video yeah. <laughs> i mean that was uh, to, to uh, me just just watching that video made it all worth it right, i mean right i mean you brought that man to tears <laughs> you, I, you know it that was, was, was so, it was so it was mostly uh, Jason Wade. He provided the pickups for that guitar. Right. Um, Kaylin, uh, yeah, uh, I remember. Yeah. Guitars. Um, she guitar. she provided the she provided the case and the strap for that guitar. Yeah. That's a nice Fender case too. And she did the she did the logos. So she did the she did the DR guitars uh, water slide, wow. and um, and then uh, I pretty much did all the rest. And I hope she's doing well. I you know she dropped off of YouTube a while back, and that's kind of too bad to see. But yeah, you know, a little over a year ago. <laughs> yeah, haven't heard heard anything from her. So. Um, yeah. It'd be nice to be nice to know she's still okay, but yeah, yeah, you know, because I know she struggled with some stuff, and a lot of us use, you know, that's why I call my channel Music Therapy Last because I've always had an interest in helping people through yep. music. And I've so, always been, you know, so lucky to be able to be able to do that, you know, to yep. help people with stuff in life with music. So it's a great, yep. great thing. Yeah, so, yeah, no, that, that was that. The Gomer Caster was a lot of fun. It was a, it was a, it was a world of fun and a project. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm, again, I'm just glad I could do it. And, and didn't you, another one? Didn't you do a Glary build for? Was it the Tone King or was it for Steve from Boston? I think Steve from Boston, right? No, nope. Do you still have it there. <laughs> Don't tell me you still have his Glary. <laughs> I still have the Glary. And and like in fact, this, this pick guard is the one I've been showing all oh, night. Oh. So there you go. So that's the pick guard that goes into this. Um, there you go. It actually does fit, I promise. Wires are just hanging out. Yeah. And uh, as you can cool. see, it, it, it looks a little different than what it looked like before. Yeah. Oh, that's so bitchy. So it is the Tone King. All right. There you go. That's sick. Yeah. 
Nice. Wow, is that like five springs on the back there or four? <laughs> I didn't uh, see that. It's four. But it's it, th th this tremolo is not movable because this is a this is an upgraded it's an upgraded uh, bridge, and the block is is um I actually had to uh, hand wrap this out a little bit more so I could get the block to actually fit in because wow. it's a much bigger so it's it's going to be it's going to be a hard tail basically anyway. I'm but, sure he's going to love. <clears throat> As you can tell, it's close to not completion. Looking very, huh? Close to completion. I'm just waiting for pickups at this point. Oh, so who are you waiting for pickups from? Uh, <laughs> they Whoever were supposed. <laughs> uh, Glenn at Guitar Bazaar uh, was oh, yeah. supposed to be winding me some pickup, winding me a set for this thing. Oh, cool! Very cool. And. Uh, yeah. He, he gets not busy during COVID like everyone who's building anything musical is like got 10 times as much work as they've ever seen before. <laughs> right. So, I mean, you know, you, you can see it's got a gloss face on it's the crazy. on the neck. Yeah, so it's really yeah. this is nice all, stain too. Nice. So this is all 2K poly. Um, I, the whole thing. Uh, yeah, so we've got a gloss on the face and then... Uh, a complete mat on the back of the neck. And you can see there's no Yeah, it's nice. Ref, no Very reflection sad. at all. So it's So did it's, you use like a satin nice spray way. finish there or did you did you just oil it or how did you do the back? The no, it's uh, it's actual spray finish. So you did a spray finish but did you do a poly or did you do a It's poly. Back? Yeah, it's 2K. It, it's all 2K. So uh we're talking automotive grade poly. Yeah. Not not you your like a gravity type sprayer or are you rattle can? No, it's rattle can. It's rattle can. Uh, I get it. I get it off of Amazon. Um, uh, it's the Mohawk brand, right? The Mohawk. No, brand. this one's not. No, this one's not Mohawk. Uh, I'll tell you what brand it is real quick. Let me just a minute. Let me. Looks nice. It, it's good stuff. Um, I'm trying to remember. I can't. I'm, remember the life of me what uh let's see i know i got some last year so i have to look at amazon to see <laughs> to see what all i got yeah, what you bought yeah i do that sometimes um <laughs> we just got some new tables that I have to be home for the delivery and okay. i thought they looked great Ah, and it's the spray. Off, what there did you even? These these things are damaged. I'm like, they're not damaged, honey. It's like wood knot holes, and the, the whole point of getting this rustic looking thing is you don't have the knot holes and little cracks in the this and that. It doesn't look rustic. It's the uh, spray max. Spray it's, max. Spray max. Yeah, yeah. is is yeah. the brand. It's the uh, 2K clear, and it's uh, it's a two part. I actually posted a link in the chat. Oh, uh, good. It's a it's a two part, and you've got the the catalyzer inside. Uh, it's inside a little a little canister inside the rattle can, and you you pop it. And when you pop it, you shake it up. And you, you, the only problem with that is you got about a forty eight hour, maybe seventy two hour shelf life on it once you once you pop it. Oh, once you once you yeah, once some of those pre cap ones are like that too. Even the Mohawk yeah. ones, like you know, once you spray, <clears throat> so, spray it out. But yeah, it th th this came out this came out pretty pretty well. Uh, I ended up, I had to re completely respray the back of it. Uh, I had to sand it down to basically bare wood because wow. the, the, the first, so people ask me how I did this. So that's actually a water slide underneath the, uh, yeah. underneath the poly and you, that's you can't, cool. you can't see the water slide. I mean, it just basically melts in, but the first, first time I did it, the, the corner of the water slide peeled up. And so the, the 2K peeled up with it. And so I had to take it back down and then I had to respray the back of it and then fade it in on the sides to make, you know, make sure everything matched. 
and then had to re-clear it or, you know, redo my water slides and then, and then re-clear it. That do you was, like do your finishing in a garage or something or do you not do it outside or how do you outside? Uh, I, I just try and pick calm days. Yeah. Uh, calm and warm days. Yeah. Yeah. When it's not too, too terribly windy. Exactly. Yeah. Cause that can be tough. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're always going to get some orange peel. I mean, I don't care yeah. how good a, I don't care how good your equipment is. I don't care how good your spray booth. You're always yeah. gonna have some orange peel. Yeah. Do you like buff that down? Then you just buff it out. Flat sand it and yeah, flat, flat, flat sand it and then pol start polishing it. I gotta decline that message. <laughs> Somebody's calling me. Should have put that yeah. on, off. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, we had to go from the laptop to the uh, phone, late late comers, because hey, Metal Light Hippie, Rick Heathner's in. I think I, think hey, I saw Amanda Coombs in there too. Yep. Amanda was my first real subscriber because I subscribed my wife to my channel, so she was my first subscriber. But I guess she doesn't really count <laughs> because she's not even watching right now, whereas Amanda is. Thank you, Amanda. Hey, <laughs> Rick. Hey, Rick. Rick Hefner's Speaking in the house. Brother Ben, he's going to be our next guest next week. Nice. Yeah, which should be interesting because um, we've seen some of Ben's mods. <laughs> we've seen some of his handiwork. <laughs> and we know he probably is going to have as many questions as I'm going to have. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we might as well call it. If you want to right, go in the green room and, and kick back yeah. for a little bit if you want, but if you don't, you can go because it's like what what time is it there? Uh, same time you are, man. It's quarter. Oh, to that's eight. right. You're in Arizona. Why do I keep yeah. thinking you're like further away? <sighs> same time, man. This time of year, same uh, time. <laughs> yeah, right on. All right. Well, I'll probably see if I can like go back to the laptop with you. All right, man. And uh, and then we'll say goodbye to everybody else and. Roxy wants to say goodbye, right, Roxy? Thank you, Dave Reese of DR Guitars. Go check out his Jordan. channel because he's got some cool stuff up there. Um, you know, some music lessons too, right? Some of the stuff yep. we learned from uh, our good friend Lawrence Mark. Petros, yep. who teased me about building a pedal named the Flying Pickle. That's the Flying Pickle right there. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. Did you hear that? The Tone King saw her like fly across me or something, and he's like, what's that, a pickle? I thought that was a pickle. And then somebody else called it nuts, no, a flying pickle. And then from then on, she got a YouTube channel now called Moniker the, the Flying Pickle. Yeah. So he said he was going to build a pedal. He says, oh, that, that's a pedal name right there. Flying yeah, Pickle. Yeah, you can do a fuzz called the Flying Pickle. There you go. <laughs> it could be a fuzz combo phaser or some stupid, crazy thing like that. I don't know. Hey, there you but, go. Yeah, he says he hates flanger. So yeah. it's never yeah. going to happen. Yeah, he's, which I was surprised to hear because uh, I'm a big Andy Summers fan and Flanger all day long, right? Right, right. Wow, Roxy. Whereas even though it was said that he used the chorus, he didn't. He used the Flanger. Flanger. Even though yeah. I've seen him using choruses, so he lied. And then <laughs> I know Randy used several choruses, didn't he? Yep. So yep. Randy. He also also choruses. used the uh, used the Flanger as well. If you listen to uh, Flying High again, there's a yeah, right, yeah. There's That's a flanger on there. Man, his music is like or, so deep. Yeah, flanger. Anyway, yeah. we better call it. Everybody, thanks, thanks for coming. The Dog Pod, Dwight Bailey, John Z Z three fifty one, Brad, Janice, everybody was here. We had how many people? Seventeen people at least. There were at one point at least eighteen people in here. Thanks for uh, coming and joining Roxy and me. He does not want me to pick her up now. Ouch, that hurt. Thanks, Dave, for joining us and Anytime, us newbies on the mods here on how to get started. And uh, hopefully, I don't like burn holes through stuff. Ah, okay. you'll be fine. My soldering iron. <laughs> you'll be fine. All right, everybody. Well, we're gonna call it. Have a good night, and see you on Sunday. That's right, Sunday morning, 9:30 a.m. Roxy and I, we just do a live stream hangout 9:30 in the morning. So if you want to have breakfast with me and Roxy. Come join us before uh, Mike, the uh, China Guitar Skeptic, CGS Mike. 
goes on at 1030. So uh, we warm up for him. But until next time, uh, don't forget that the secret to tone is in your mind, but the feel comes from your heart. Put them together using your toes, your fingers, your teeth, whatever body parts you need to use to make music and make some music and rock on. See you guys later. Be good, gang. <laughs>